Hi guys, this is Josh from Pomeroy Creative. Today's video is a response to a question that I've got on something about iDraw. Now, I haven't done a video in a while on iDraw, so I felt like this was a great time to do, to do one and to answer this uh, question. It's about the blur option in the uh, newest update in iDraw. They introduced some new features, and one of them was blur. So we're going to experiment with this feature in uh, in iDraw today. So here I am in iDraw, as you see on the screen. I'm just going to make myself a little smaller here. Okay, so uh, basically, this is just a blank document. I opened it up, uh, eight and a half by 11, uh, piece of paper size document. And what I wanna do is just create something very, very simple, just so that we can get um, an idea of what this blur filter does. So I'm just going to create a circle here. I'm going to fill it with a color. Let's just maybe make it blue. And then I'm just going to make a, a foreshortened ellipse. Okay. And I'm just going to line it up with the edges of my circle. And I'm going to fill it with black and move it to the back. Now, if you don't remember or haven't seen any of my videos, I talk about how to do all of these things in shortcuts, and it's very, very easy. You just use the Command Shift and the left bracket key to move things backwards or underneath. I just noticed I have a stroke on my um, circle here that I don't want, so I can just turn it off here in the Appearance panel right there. Okay, so now we've got a, this, this black sort of foreshortened uh, circle ellipse. I'm just gonna make it a little bit taller. This is gonna end up being sort of a cast shadow, um, which will help our circle look less flat and more like a, a sphere that's sitting on the surface. So with that selected, I can select it here on the canvas or I can select it over here in the uh, the layers panel. I'm going to go ahead and double click this and just rename it Shadow. Okay, so under Shadow, I'm going to make sure that the stroke is off, so I don't need that. I can even just remove it by right clicking and saying remove. Uh, but I'm going to turn on Blur, which is now down here at the bottom. And as soon as I turn on Blur, you see now that I get this nice soft effect. It's just blurring the edges. Now, if I toggle it down, I have a radius slider that will allow me to really uh, blur that way out. And I can probably make it a little bit smaller. So it's blurring, it's blurring it from, from the edge and within. So it's just softening up this whole, this whole object. So I'll turn off the blur. So we still have this solid, flat, uh, black filled colored shape. Turn on the blur. And there we have it. This feature is also available in Inkscape. If you're a PC user or Mac user or Linux user, uh, Inkscape is a free vector graphics application, much like iDraw. Um, but uh, it's had the blur feature for, for quite a while, and uh, it's really fantastic. So the blur is, is something that you can use um, to soften things. So rather than just a static, solid, flat, uh, with with very distinct rigid edges. Now you can make some uh, nice gradually softening edges on your shapes. Another thing that I can do, and I'll use it a little bit differently, it's this exact same process, is since I want to make this more like a sphere and not a flat circle, I'm going to give this like colored palette, make this white, turn off the stroke, uh, I'm going to give this a shine, and I'm going to use the blur, the blur feature again to do that. So I want to want to put a little highlight right up here at the top of this circle. Again, I want to make it look more like a sphere, so I'm going to blur it. Now, there's another feature that I just like to to kind of hint at in this video, and uh, that is the the masking features. So if I created a new group, let me put all of these into a, a group. Actually, what I'm going to do is um, I'm, going to, I'm going to duplicate this circle. Oops. 
So I'm going to copy and paste it in the exact same place. And then I'm going to cut the rest of these shapes and select just the circle itself. I actually don't want to do that with the shadow. Let me go back. Okay, so I want to, I want to cut the um, shape and then select just the circle itself. If I go to edit, I can, I can, um, where is it, paste inside. So it's the paste inside feature that basically creates a new uh, folder with the mask of that shape. So now I can turn off the fill of that circle and I can uh, make my, my glow as big as I want. And just to make sure you see what this is actually doing, I'll give myself, you know, let's do it this way. I'll give myself a background color. I'll go to the canvas area here and give myself a background color. Okay, so you see what's happening is this shape is now exceeding the boundaries of my circle, but it's being clipped inside of my uh, group, which, uh, which happened when I pasted it inside. So that's in the, found in the edit menu. Uh, all right, now what I want to do is create an, yet again another shape here. I'm just going to fill it with black, take off the stroke. Okay, and I'm going to modify this just ever so slightly uh, to give myself sort of a bean shape or a smiley face shape, something like this. Okay, I'm going to take the opacity down. I'm going to make it uh, actually just a dark blue color. And then I'm going to turn on the blur. And I'm going to push the blur up quite a bit. So what this is going to be is, is just the shadow area of of the sphere down at the bottom. So the light would be coming from the top. Um, and uh, you always get some reflected light off of the surface. If it's sitting on a surface, you get some reflected light, uh, which would be, so here's our, our primary light up here. This is just some extra bonus <laughs> uh, tutorial stuff here. So if our light was up here, we, we'd we have light shining down. So the, uh, most of it's getting picked up right here, which is our big shine right there at the top. But there's some light that's going to hit this surface here and reflect back. And so you'll see we've got a little bit lighter here down at the edge. Now you could achieve this with gradient fills, but you wouldn't have quite as much control over how these shadings, uh, how these shapes sort of interact with each other and, and make something like this. So this is just a very, very simple use. We used Three, uh, three ellipse shapes, modify them just a little bit, and then turn on that blur feature and played with the radius of that blur to create something like you see on the screen. So that's, that's a really great way of using the blur feature. Of course, you can use it on lots of other things. Um, I believe this will work with images as well. Let me just test it out. Bear with me. Um, I have not tried this yet. So let's just grab one of those. We'll just grab Batman. Why not? So I'll drag Batman in here. And uh, make him a little smaller. Okay. And let's try turning on the blur. Yep. So it works just fine with as, a, as an image filter as well. So you can just turn on the blur and boost it up. Now this is a non-destructive filter, which is actually really, really great. So uh, something that uh, I commonly do is especially for like website design, but but even for print design and etc., is you have a, a sort of background image which may mostly you just want to have some some color, some some texture or something in the background, but you want to put text on top of that or maybe a foreground image in front of that. And blur is a really great way, sort of tri of tricking the eye to focus on what you want them to focus on. So for example, I know that this is Batman, but I could just continue blurring the heck out of it until it's not even recognizable anymore. And uh, then I could also, let me turn this symmetry off here. I'm just gonna put him in the background and make sure he's going to stretch. Something like this, move him all the way to the back. Maybe take the opacity down and maybe even blur it some more. So now you see it's it's basically ended up just just as a 
just some visual noise, some visual interest that just kind of sits in the background. So there's another way that you can use this blur tool with images in, uh, in iDraw. I'm just gonna get rid of that. I'll get rid of my example light source there as well. Uh, same thing here, I can drop this uh, shadow shape here that we put blur on into the, uh, the clipping mask folder. And so now I can, I can move that whole thing around. Uh, then I can put all of this into a group so that I can move the shadow along with it. And uh, very, very easy to do. Uh, easy to, to uh, sort of keep things editable and highly live and interactive so that you can work on, work on things and make changes, tweaks as you go. Uh, so there you go. There's a few ways that you can use the blur feature in the uh, appearance panel in uh, the new version of iDraw, which by the way, um, I'm using iDraw 2.5.1. So if you don't have that version, make sure you get that to have the, the blur feature in the, the appearance and effects panel. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Thanks for the request and keep them coming. Please like and subscribe and, and do leave me some comments. I will make videos on what you ask for. All right, guys. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.